A year and a half ago, I thought I had a pretty normal life. I ate a healthy diet while living with my parents. A diet that included quinoa, 16 grain bread, squash, spinach, celery, kale, or as I call it, kelp. <laughs> well, I felt pretty healthy and enjoyed this for some time. But then I noticed that I had one secret addiction. I love sweets. And when I studied abroad in Europe a year ago with no parental guidance, my sweet tooth went wild and changed my life forever. It started off so fun with bakeries on every corner, chocolate whenever I was having a bad day, gelato, oh dear. Yes, we have faith that this will go forward. <laughs> mm hmm. Well, I had nibbled myself into a physical crisis. Okay, we have gone very far. <laughs> okay, well, soon I had debilitating headaches, I had chronic insomnia continual exhaustion, painful bloating, irritating diarrhea, and, yeah, and <laughs> oozing ear infections and bleeding wounds where I'd itched myself raw. Now what exactly was wrong? I figured I just had some food allergy I would deal with once I got home. After all, you only live in Europe once, right? Well, lucky for me, I did only live in Europe once because what began as just a pastry here and there turned into a physical nightmare that nearly destroyed my entire study abroad. Back home, and after months of experimenting with various over-the-counter medications and fiddling with my diet, I was sicker than ever. At last, I landed in the doctor's office where I received a stunning diagnosis. I learned I had what 25% of Americans suffer from, candida yeast overgrowth. What in the world is that? Well, according to researcher Melissa Macris, there is a delicate balance in your body, which includes about four pounds of hardworking bacteria, microorganisms that are essential to life. These bacteria protect the body from disease. They help convert food into energy produce vitamin K necessary for bone formation and, and blood clotting, and even prevent cancer. As shocking as it is, we destroy our own good bacteria by consuming too much sugar and white flour, causing the bad bacteria, known as candida yeast, to take over and disrupt your life. If one-fourth of America suffers from this disorder, that means that about 100 people in this room right now could be experiencing an overgrowth of candida yeast and not even know it. Is it you? In addition to the symptoms I had, you might also experience a runny nose, bad breath, hives, heartburn, asthma, allergies, muscle pain, weight gain, anxiety and depression, rectal itching. <laughs> you might also have bladder infections, colitis, infertility, and birth defects. Further, candida has been linked to reduced mental function and memory loss. How does that sound right before finals? <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, candida is linked to type two diabetes, celiac disease, and several types of cancer. Eating too much sugar is literally killing us. Just how big of an issue is sugar consumption in America? Well, every year we consume 4 billion M&Ms. And last year, if M&Ms aren't your favorite, we ate 800 million Reese's peanut butter cups. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. According to the USDA, the average American consumes 156 pounds of sugar every year. That's 31 five-pound bags of sugar per person. <coughs> Clearly, sugar consumption 
is a real danger that's invading our nation. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, I didn't eat my way through Europe like Lucy here. <laughs> but think, what did you have for breakfast? What was the last thing you bought out of the vending machines? We think we're in the clear without addicting drugs and alcohol as a regular part of our lifestyle. But we have created our own addiction, which has become an epidemic at BYU. There are cookies at every fireside, brownies at classroom parties, bowls of candy in the Wilk. If you value your health, you'll steer clear of these tenacious temptations. Now, you may not be able to completely eliminate sugar from your life. I know how difficult that is. But you can do better, and your health is depending on it. Here are two ways that you can reduce sugar intake right now to reduce the spread of candida in your body. First, stop drinking. Well, actually, the first one is to replace sugary snacks with healthy ones by finding things that you like. I've discovered some very delicious and very satisfying snacks, such as fresh strawberries, frozen grapes, and almond butter and other natural nut butters, whole grain crackers, and popcorn popped in coconut oil. Second, stop drinking sugar. The first to go is soda. But it's not just soda. And many have thought that fruit juice is a good alternative. Think again. A 16-ounce bottle of Minute Maid orange juice has more sugar than a slice of, <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, you're all on the edge of your seats. <laughs> oh, wow, OK. <laughs> it has more sugar than a slice of German chocolate cake. And that's the same amount of sugar that's in 7-Up and root beer. Believe it or not, sugar is controlling our nation, and it may be ruining your health. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, it may be time for a visit to the doctor. And if you're not, it may just be a matter of time before candida finds its way into your system. It terrifies me that sugar can control how I function and how I feel. I have been almost entirely sugar-free for nine months now, and I feel better than I have in years. By shifting your eating habits this week, what you eat and drink as you prepare for finals, you may find your body and brain functioning better than ever. It's time to break the chains of sugar addiction. Your physical, mental, and emotional health depend on it. Sugar may taste sweet, but now you know the bitter truth.